So this video covers the lab analyzing a mixture of sodium hydrogen carbonate and sodium chloride by thermal decomposition. So this lab is fundamentally a, an analytical lab where you're going to use stoichiometry to figure out how much of a sodium bicarbonate you have in a mixture of sodium bicarbonate and sodium chloride. And so just a quick summary, um, you're going to heat a mixture of sodium bicarbonate and sodium chloride. You're not going to know the ratio of the two solids, um, but you'll see when we talk about the chemical reaction that um, you will have a change in mass. And you're going to use this mass loss to figure out how much uh, sodium bicarbonate was present in the original sample. And then you're going to use that rate result to calculate the ratio of sodium chloride and sodium bicarbonate present in the sample. So the key here is that you've got a mixture and you don't know how much of each one. And so this is a reaction-based method to be able to figure out how much you have. So this really addresses the fundamental question of how much stuff do I have, one of those fundamental chemistry motivators. So again, we're using a commercial lab manual, um, which isn't totally going to match up with how we're going to do it. So there will be a couple changes. One, I'd like you to work in pairs, so you'll work with your lab partner. Um, and in this lab, the manual describes the use of crucibles. And those are nice, but they're pretty hard to clean out, and it's really hard to analyze. So we're going to use aluminum pans instead, and instead of a, holding them, we'll have like little screens in place. So you'll be able to see this in the movie. It's, it's a really straightforward substitution. And then finally, during the cooling steps, they use a desiccator. Um, we're not going to use the desiccator uh, to, to make sure there's no water present. I think water won't be a major problem uh, for us most of the times that we do this lab. So I think those will be the, the minor changes, but everything else will be the same. So we'll repeat the safety issues uh, when we get to the pre-lab, but you know, mainly we're using Bunsen burners today. So uh, you're going to heat things up, things are going to be hot, so don't burn yourself. It's the most common lab injury. You think of all the, the terrible things you can do yourself, most people just burn themselves like they do in the kitchen. So don't uh, touch things that are hot, use tongs, let everything cool down, don't get too anxious again. Thing. And you will be working with open flames, so don't set anything on fire, yourself, paper towels, trash can, whatever you might be. So fundamentally, the reaction that we're going to observe is going to be the reaction of uh, thermal decomposition of bicarbonate. So if you heat bicarbonate, uh, it turns into sodium bicarbonate. It turns into sodium carbonate and gives off uh, water uh, as well as CO2 gases. Okay, So this would be the, the standard balanced reaction. So you should be able, using standard stoichiometry, to be able to figure out if you started out with a certain amount of sodium bicarbonate and you heated it completely to sodium carbonate, how many grams of sodium carbonate you would have left. You could assume the water and the carbon dioxide will float away, so the only mass left will be sodium, bicarb sodium carbonate. So this should be a fairly straightforward calculation. But let's say instead we have sodium chloride. Now sodium chloride, when it's heated, it melts potentially, but we're hopefully not going to melt it. But if it doesn't really react the same way the bicarbonate does. So let's say we have a mixture of one gram of sodium bicarbonate and one or half a gram of sodium bicarbonate and a half gram of sodium chloride. Okay, so all of the sodium, and we heat it long enough, all of the sodium bicarbonate is going to get converted into sodium carbonate. Now, we're starting with 0.5 grams of sodium carbonate, so in this case, we're only going to get 0.315 grams of sodium carbonate and chloride, on the other hand, doesn't change whatsoever. So it's going to all still be a half gram. It was a half gram to begin with, as a half gram afterwards. So then if you just look at how much is left in the pan, you'll see that the total is actually 0.815. So it's composed of the sodium chloride mixture as well as the sodium carbonate mixture. Okay, so this is conceptually the, you know, I think it's pretty easy to see here, but it gets more complicated because then what we're going to do in the lab then is we're going to do the reverse. We're going to start with an amount, but we don't know the ratio. And then we're going to get some amount of loss. So we're only going to be able to measure the total. We're not going to be able to measure uh, how much of each one we have. So then we will have to use our deductive reasoning then to figure out how much bicarbonate we had to begin with. Um, based on how much we lost. And so this is really the, the big conceptual leap, okay, um, is, to figure, is, to, is to figure this out. So this will be one of the things that you're going to have to do for the lab workup 
is to then go back and then figure out what your potential uh, uh, ratio was based on just really two observations, how much you have at the beginning of the reaction and how much you have at the end. So the first thing you want to do when you start is turn on a hot plate. We're going to use a hot plate instead of a Bunsen burner. It's just a little bit safer and not quite as stinky. So we'll set it at about 150 to 200 degrees and we'll let that go. Now while we're doing that, we'll pick uh, one of the unknown bottles. There'll be a couple different ones that have different ratios. We'll grab a, a weighing pan, one of these aluminum weighing pans. Um, and so you'll pre-weigh uh, that, know the weight of that. And then you'll measure out, you know, I don't know, somewhere in the vicinity of a gram of material. Um, it doesn't have to be exactly a gram. The key is that you write down whatever it is. And so you'll get the, you'll obtain the mass of that as well. And so the key with your stuff is to kind of spread it out in the pan so it gets evenly heated, make sure there's no clumps or anything like that. And so after that, then you're going to place it on the uh, hot plate and you're going to let it cook. Now, you probably ought to sort of stir it a little bit or something, so give it a little shake. You don't want to lose any, though. That would be crit critical. Now, the real problem is, is that you probably, you're going to be able to use your finger like once, and then after that, you'll have to use the tongs. So just kind of heat it for about 10 to 15 minutes, okay? And so and you might make some observations about what it looks like. You don't want to shake it too much, but after it's sort of gotten to the point where it's cool to the touch, then you can obtain the mass. Now, what we typically do with these hot plates is if you do 10 or 15 minutes, you might be okay, but you might have to heat it again. Um, so just to make sure that you've totally gotten rid of, you've decomposed all of the bicarb. So it's a good idea after your first run to go ahead and do just another run, at least one more. So put it back on the hot plate and let it cook for, I don't know, maybe five minutes, and then you can get the mass of that. And if the mass doesn't change, then you know that you've, you've decomposed it completely. If it doesn't, you might have to heat it again. All the solids can be washed down the sink with a lot of water, and it should, because uh, everything, there's no real hazardous materials here.